How's it going my spooky bakers? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're making super soft burger buns, black burger buns. So let's go to the kitchen and check them out. Last year for Halloween, I made a charcoal sourdough loaf with goji berries and had lots of that charcoal powder left over. So I thought I might as well use it this year again. And I simply converted my Udane burger buns to be made with charcoal. This is my go-to burger bun recipe. These buns are extremely soft and light. And don't worry, the charcoal doesn't make them taste weird at all. It doesn't taste of anything really. It's just there to make it black and spooky. And I have thrown in the recipe for the burgers too. So you're getting a two for one this Halloween. And you really don't want to miss this one. It is a solid burger. So let's get right to it and see how it's made. For the main part of the dough, we'll need some white bread flour, milk, yeast, salt, sugar, softened butter, an egg yolk, and some activated charcoal powder. For the udane, we'll need some white bread flour, some boiling water, and some more charcoal powder. And we'll use the leftover egg white for glazing the buns. This will give them a nice shine, and we'll make the stencil stick. As for the equipment, we'll need a tray with some non-stick paper, a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, a brush, and a stencil. You can find the stencil in my Amazon shop, link down below, along with all the other stuff I use. Of course you don't need to buy this, if you are creative enough and handy enough you can make a stencil. Right first things first, let's make the Udane. In a small bowl, combine the flour and the charcoal and mix them well. Then add the boiling water, cover and leave to cool down. Mixing flour with boiling water makes the starches in the flour gelatinize. That will give our dough a beautifully soft texture. The Udane method works similarly to a Tang Zhong. If you are not familiar with these methods, you can find a video about them in the Principles of Baking playlist, as I'm not going to go into details here. So just make the mix and leave it to cool down completely. Right, let's get on with our burgers. We'll need some minced beef, onions, garlic, salt and pepper, Worcestershire sauce, some fresh thyme, and my not-so-secret secret ingredients, some dried old bread. The Udane makes the burger buns soft. This dried bread will make our burgers soft. We need to soak this bread, so cover it with water and immediately squeeze the water out. If you keep it in water for too long, it'll turn into porridge, and you might not be able to pick it up anymore. Squeeze as much water out of it as possible, and then crumble it into the bowl with the meat. And now add the rest of the ingredients, the thyme, the Worcestershire sauce, salt and pepper, garlic and the onions. You can of course use whichever ingredients you like, but I would definitely suggest trying out the dried bread method. It really works. I use it when making meatballs all the time. And this burger mix would work quite well as a meatball, Similar than some spicy tomato sauce, it would go down nicely. Right, mix everything well. You want all the ingredients to be distributed evenly. Now divide the mix into four equal pieces. We're making four buns and four burgers. After dividing, press them together, and then flatten them slightly to shape into patties. Later on, I will flatten them even further before they go in the oven. Now cover your burgers and pop them in the fridge until later. We'll move on to making our dough. A quick note on temperature control here. I'm using cold milk, but I left my Udana at room temperature. Because this dough will be kneaded with a slap and fold method, it will not warm up too much. Normally, I would refrigerate the Udana. And if your kitchen is quite warm, you might want to do that. Because it makes up a significant part of the dough, it will affect the final temperature quite a lot. And if all this temperature talk is confusing to you, check out the video on it in the Principles of Baking playlist. Right back to our dough. In a large bowl, Combine the milk, yeast, salt, sugar, charcoal and the egg yolk. Mix it well to dissolve the salt and sugar and hydrate the yeast. Then add the butter, the udane and the flour. Then grab your scraper and mix it to a dough. Mix it in the bowl until there's no more dry flour left. Then tip it out on the table and we can start kneading it. It is a bit sticky and stretchy, so we'll be using the slap and fold kneading method. The way it works is that you pick it up by one side, turn it 90 degrees, stretch it against the table towards yourself and fold it over forwards and always pick it up by the side, turn it, stretch it and fold it. Halfway through the mix you might get away by switching to the regular kneading method, but it is quite sticky. And don't worry about the charcoal, it should not stain anything. Even though my table and my hands look quite horrible, it will come off very easily. Activated charcoal is actually used for whitening teeth. Now I don't know how effective that is, but it's a thing. Anyhow, if things get sticky and messy, just scrape it all together and continue kneading. All in all, it should not take more than 6 minutes. Once you're done, the dough should be nice and smooth and cohesive. Now we can pop it in a bowl and take its temperature. 
Around 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit is just about right for this. If your dough is warmer, it will ferment more rapidly. If it's cooler, it will take longer. Same goes for your kitchen temperature. My kitchen is around 24 degrees Celsius. So I'll cover the dough and leave it to ferment for around 2 hours. You want it to double in size basically. And this has risen pretty well. Now we can divide it and pre-shape it. You may have noticed that we didn't fold the dough during bulk fermentation. This is to keep the buns extra light and airy. Folding tightens the gluten. And we want this dough to be nice and loose. To get consistent results, weigh your dough before you divide it. After dividing, we need to pre-shape. Pre-shaping is there to make the dough balls nice and uniform. Because at the moment, their shapes are a bit random. Place any little scraps on top. Then flatten the dough out, fold the edge over the middle, go around in a circle until you reach the point where you started. Now cover the dough balls up and let them rest for 20 minutes. During this time the gluten will relax. And that will make the final shaping easier. And it is quite like the pre-shaping. Take a dough ball, place it with the smooth side down, then flatten it out slightly, then fold the edge over the middle and go around in a circle until you reach the point where you started. Don't fold it too tight. As I said, we want these dough balls to be nice and loose. You can round it off slightly against the table, then finally pick it up and pinch the steam together at the bottom. And what do you know, you got three more to practice on. Place your dough balls on a baking tray lined with some nonstick paper. Make sure you leave plenty of space between them. They will get quite a lot bigger by the time they're done. The final proof will take around an hour and a half, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. During the final hour of fermentation, preheat the oven 160 degrees Celsius, fan on. And that is 320 degrees Fahrenheit. And just look at these bad boys, they're huge. When shaking the tray, they should have a nice wobble to them. They have definitely puffed up to more than twice the size. Make sure you whisk the egg white slightly before you brush it on. Give your buns a nice thick coating all over. Now place on the stencil and sprinkle with some flour. I'm using a tea strainer and it is quite handy to have something like this. But you can just sprinkle it on with your fingers. Remove the stencil slowly and carefully. And if you messed up that first one, there's three more to redeem yourself with. But even if they're not perfect, who cares? It's a black burger bun with a skull and crossbones on it. We could just say that rustic is a theme here. I should mention at this point that my burgers are out of the fridge. Whilst the buns are baking and cooling down, I want the burgers to come up to room temperature. That will make them cook more evenly. Right, these bad boys can go in the oven and they'll take around 25 minutes. It is hard to tell their doneness by the crust color because it doesn't really change. But they should be ready in 25 minutes. Looking pretty cool, right? Let's leave these to cool down on a rack. Turn the oven up to 250 degrees Celsius, that's 482 Fahrenheit. Let's get ready to bake some burgers. And yes, I'm baking them. This is the lazy way of doing them, but it works really well. As you can see, I've flattened them out quite a lot, because they will shrink, of course. Place the rack closer to the heating element at the top and bake your burgers for around 12 minutes. Once they get a nice char on top, pull them out of the oven. Put a slice of cheese on each burger and then pop them back in the oven for another minute or so. And if you've never made them like this before, give it a try. It just makes life so much easier. Right, I'm ready to assemble some burgers. Here's our bun. It's beautifully soft. You can toast your buns if you want, but I didn't this time. I've got some mayonnaise mixed with some sriracha sauce, giving it a little spicy kick, followed with a cheeseburger, pickles, tomato, red onion, and finally some more sauce for the top bun. Close the lid, pick it up, and bite right into it. This is a seriously good burger. The sweet, soft bun. The slightly salty, savory, nicely browned and cheesy burger. The sharpness of the pickles. The spicy sriracha sauce and creamy mayo. The fresh, juicy tomato and the red onion. It all just works so perfectly together. If you're a carnivore, you will love this. So what do you think this recipe? Have you ever used activated charcoal in cooking or baking before? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.